Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Morning, everybody. I'm so happy and so honored to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. I, Amsterdam is one of my favorite cities ever. I am, I'm really, really, really excited to be back after, I think, four years was the last time. And of course, it's a honor to be here at What Design Can Do. Uh, so, I'm Guto, I'm coming from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And uh, I want to, to invite you to begin this morning asking, uh, what about love? If you want to talk about design, if you want to talk about the change uh, in the city, we need to think about love, right? And how technology should work with love to reshape our lives and to reshape our city. So I prepared a small presentation. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my background, a little bit of my obsessions and passions, and of course showcase some of the projects. So this is Little Guto in a tiny town where I grew up in, 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 the, in the Sao Paulo state called Arasoyabinha da Serra. This is me with two years old. This is me again with my beautiful blazer <laughs> and my dog, Drupi. This is uh, 91. So Drupi was gunshotted when I was uh, 12, my, my, my little dog. That was my first uh, touch with violence in my life. Uh, this is me during the university, probably doing one of my, my first architectural model. Uh, this was also the year that I, I was kidnapped for a couple of hours. I had a gun in my head for almost five hours, and they, I mean, they took my car, they took uh, a lot more with them. Um, this is my father and I, little Guto again. And my father was also killed. He was gunshotted inside his house uh, when I was in, in the college. Uh, yes, so... Very tough stuff, of course, and I wanted to share this because I, during this, this, this moment, I think everybody has their own tragedies in, our, in their own way, and I come from a very violent country, and I decided that I was not looking to the dark side of life, because there is a lot of dark if you want to look, and I decided that I wanted to go into a light path, and I decided that I wanted to look into the sun, and I also understood that if I wanted to do some architecture, I should deal with these with this questions in my, in my practice, since I'm living in Sao Paulo, since I'm living in a country with so much inequality. Okay, so uh, 1999 was the year I got into my graduation school, I studied architecture, and that was the year that was, well, very important for me because that was the moment that I got in touch with my first internet uh, connection in my life. I got my first email account and then uh, I got my first social network, which was Orkut. And that changed completely my, my, my notion of space and architecture and time. And I got a big crisis because I understood that the world we are moving through, it's was supposed to get more hybrid, right? The, the analog with the digital. So this is a, an, an incredible image from a, a, a slum, a favela in Sao Paulo, the beginning of the 90s, that shows that these technologies, as we all know, they got into our lives so much. I mean, even in Brazil, 70% of the population has access to, to internet. So that, that says a lot about the city, the houses, the workspace we need to design for them. I was also fascinated about the idea that we are the very first uh, cyborg generation in humankind. This also changed completely our notion of space and time, and if I want to design spaces and architecture and city, I definitely should give a zoom in to understand what is happening in our body. Our body is getting prosthetic. Technologies are literally getting hybridized with our flesh. Our body now is made from flesh, technology, and data. So the cognition is changing. So if I want to design, I, this is like, this is the basic. This is what I would need to, to see. If you get the volume a little low, please. So I'm gonna showcase some of the projects. This is Light Creature. Uh, so what if architecture could be hacked? What if we could uh, use the surface of the, the buildings to, for data visualization, for, to share information. I truly believe that this is the most democratic way of showing information to the citizen and to stimulate uh, 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 citizenship, for example. So this is a, a, a building from the 60s and I was invited to create an uh, interactive facade. Sao Paulo is a very polluted city and very noisy city. 
We all know that when, when we are there, we live in this, in, the, in this chaos. Sao Paulo is one of the coolest places on the planet. I really invite you to come there. It's a beautiful, I mean, it's not a beautiful, but it's a really interesting city. And Brazil is an incredible country, so please welcome. Uh, so what happens at Light Creature is that we installed uh, sensors in the rooftop of the building that collects in real time the air quality. So this light creature changes its behavior in real time, responding to the air quality. So the colors changes. Uh, so the light creature usually is very red, which means it's angry, it, which means it's super polluted. And also we have a couple of microphones installed around the building that collects the soundscape and it changes the shape and the movement of the creature. And there's also an app that allows people to interact with and to talk with the creature. So, I know that Sao Paulo is, has a horrible air quality, but now I have a building, a high 40 floors building in the middle of my way in one of the busiest avenues in Sao Paulo. Maybe this would provoke a reflection about what can I do, what should I act to change this reality. So this is an example of what I believe the future of architecture could be, this hybrid architecture, which is hybridized with uh, concrete and glass and bricks, but also with new digital technologies. This is the, a project I recently developed for the uh, Olympic Games in Rio. And I, I asked, what if architecture could be emotive, literally? What if the world we live could respond to stimulus? What if this architecture could stimulate uh, 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 emotions as well? So I was invited to design. That was the, gr the, the greatest briefing I had in my life from a client. They, they said, Guto, we want you to design the coolest dancing club from Rio de Janeiro during the Olympics. I was like, yes, that's my dream. So I've been designing many clubs in, in, in Brazil and in Sao Paulo, but I always worked with a, a, a closed, controlled light, you know, using LED light in a dark space. But this is real. I was like, I'm not going to create something closed and dark. I want to use the sun as much as possible. So what happened there is that we, we used different kind of sensors that collect the movement, uh, the movement of the hand. You know, when we are in this amazing party and, uh, you know, like everybody's screaming. So what if we collect this emotion from the dance floor and the entire architecture could respond to it? So this is the emotive architecture that I call the dancing pavilion. And as you can see, the patterns of this, this, this dancing mirrors, they change it according to the stimulus of the dance floor. Uh, it was also uh, an opportunity to play with the sun inside the space, creating these optic effects. Well, the result was this. It was 10 in the morning, and believe me, people were drunk and dancing funk to the, <laughs> to the dance floor. It was such a cool moment. I mean, <laughs> we don't need much, right? Just give me good beer and then just give music, and we play the party. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's the dancing pavilion. Uh, also, what if we could add new poetic layers through digital technologies in the urban space, in urban furniture. So this is a, an exercise that I did, a project that I did, that I called, uh, Can You Tell Me a Secret? So it was installed uh, as a temporary installation in a neighborhood in historical downtown called Bom Retiro. And this is the place for immigrants. We got a lot of immigrants in Brazil, as, as you know. I think this is one of the notions that I love about my country. Anyone here could be Brazilian, and nobody would ever ask you where you're coming from. Uh, because it's such a melting pot of, of, of a mix and diversity and culture. Anyway, this is the place for immigrants. And so it's a very simple, low-budget installation, but I think we got a powerful uh, result. There is a chamber with written, uh, can you tell me a secret, and, I'm a, and, and a telephone. So basically, people were invited to get the phone and narrate an intimate secret of their life. Once you sit it on the bench, there were five benches, uh, the sensors randomly played this data so you could listen to the secrets, and, and, and lights reacted to their voice as well. So what I, what I noticed at that moment, that was like a, a very good moment of my, of, 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 my, of, my, of my project, is that I saw that people that probably wouldn't meet normally, they were meeting there. I saw, for example, this image. There was this old guy from Nigeria, this black old guy seated, and then this, this, this young lady from South Korea seated on the back. And they start laughing, probably some funny secrets. They looked at each other, and they start talking, and then they leave talking. That was the 
greatest moment, I said, yes, you know, what if, my, what if we could stimulate empathy? What if we could stimulate uh, the collective, people on the street? Because in Brazil, and I think in many of the Latin, I think in all the Latin American countries, they, the fear industry, the industry of fear, which, uh, which, which makes so much money in the past decades, they made us believe that if you want to be happy, you must have, live in a private condominium, you must pay for private security, you must have fun inside shopping malls, or you must have a bulletproof car. So in the past decades, we were denying the city, and we know this is, uh, it's the opposite. We must retake public space, we must occupy public space. So this is what is happening in Sao Paulo and in Latin American countries, and especially in the past 10 years, pretty much pushed by new digital technologies. People are retaking public spaces, are occupying the streets. There's a lot of festivals and music and, and things going on in the street. This is my latest creation. It's called Mapped Empathies. So this is a prototype that I was able to build inside a museum in Sao Paulo just two weeks ago. Uh, to experiment not only the technology and the shape, but above all, to experiment how people would react with my idea. So my idea was creating these structures in the city, uh, registering this in copyleft, so anyone would be allowed to copy, to remake, and make it better, hopefully. So a functional urban furniture, you sit to wait for the bus, or you park your bike, or you cover yourself from the rain, and so on. So what if we could add, you know, these this poetic layers, these digital layers, uh, in terms of stimulating empathy? So what happened in this, in, this, in this idea is that you sit inside, you protect yourself from the sun, we have a lot of sun in Brazil, as you all know, but you also can share your heartbeat. So you just uh, uh, plug your, your, your finger on the sensor, and then we collect the volume, the audio of your heartbeat in real time, and we have sound speakers that plays the sound beat. So once I was reading definitions about empathy, and I, I, I got this definition that really made me think, it says that empathy is feeling with the other's heart. So I thought about it, what if we could listen? What if we could feel the other people's heart? So when they sit, they listen their own heart, but they also listen the other people's heart. And it's fun because when we are in the street, when we are with people, with, with strangers, we don't look into the eyes, right? We, we, we quite don't look back and we are ashamed. And I wanted to provoke this eye contact as well. So in this past 15 days, the, the installation is working pretty well. People got ashamed, they listened to the heart, they got excited. There is a generative music that plays after 15 seconds that collects this heartbeat to create live music. And then they start, I, I saw people crying. Uh, I saw people, you know, talking when they left. So this is the kind of city I would love to live in the future. And I think this is something we really should work as designers and architects and creatives. This is the love project. This is my biggest obsession. It's been now six years that I'm experimenting with this idea. So basically, I'm inviting people to narrate the biggest love story of their lives. I put there in a chamber in privacy. I don't listen to the story, I don't record the story, but I plug sensors in their body to collect the emotional data that the body produces. We know that when we are emotional, our body produces data, right? My heart beats faster, my, my, my brain activity changes. So I thought, what if we use this emotional data literally to shape shapes? You know, to build uh, objects, to build uh, 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 maybe spaces or even architecture, that would be a dream. I like to think about this notion of sustainable effect. Okay, wow, my God, okay, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. So, uh, okay, wake up. Just, uh, just I love thinking about in this hey, future. Hey, 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 ah, okay, I have a question, <laughs> okay, sorry. Just a quick question. As you have to convince, I guess, a lot of people before your start project, Yeah. And I guess a lot of people in the city hall, how do you do that? Because to convince people to say that society will be better with design, but we have to convince a lot of people before you start a project. How do I convince people yeah. about, about, about... About to start your project in uh, making a beautiful, uh, a beautiful place or this beautiful life? You mean lives? these people or mean my clients? Because you have to convince all the city hall. You mean this, these people or my clients? Your clients. Okay, my clients. Uh, well, I... They never, actually, I, I think I never get a client that comes and say, Guto, I want interactive installation that works with sensors and love. Never. <laughs> <laughs> 
Actually, I have big clients like uh, Heineken or Philips, and they come and they say, okay, we have to use this space, and we, we have this time and this budget. And then it, I think we have to be a little bit of professors. You have to keep calm, <laughs> as all the professors. And I think you have to sit with your client or, uh, and, and, and give a little, le a, a, little, a little class, you know? Like, so I, I like to give a historical perspective, and I like to show the possibilities. And they always say, no, this is expensive, this is impossible. Especially in Brazil, I mean, it's quite difficult if you want to deal with this quite of interactive situation, because it's expensive. So we had to learn how to do it in a low technological way. Everything I'm showing here seems to be very technological, but in the end, it's, it's not. It's not. I think it's more about the content than the technology itself. Yeah. Maybe I can invite you to finish your lecture. Yeah, it's okay. I just need to show this last one, uh, which was because this is the main project on my, on my lecture, so I really want to go for it. So I invited people to narrate a love story. I plugged the sensors in the body, and I created this technology that shapes 3D printed shapes thinking that the future of sustainability could be much more effective. So instead of, for example, of going to a, a store and buy something to my mom on her birthday, what if I could narrate a childhood memory and I could shape something from this? The life cycle of the product would be much longer for, for sure. So last year, trying to make this experience more democratic, I opened, I, I, I developed this startup called Aura Pendant, and to make it more democratic, we created this app that I'm inviting you to, to play with. You just download the app, unfortunately, just for iPhone so far, and you narrate a love story. So our technological system, they measure your emotions through your voice and through your heartbeat, and in the end, it generates a mandala, and we can 3D print this mandala, and you can wear close to your heart, and you can give to someone you love. So in the end, it's not about the object itself, but it's about the process, about inviting people to think about love. And I've been seeing many people crying. It seems crazy, but when you think for a moment to meditate and to think about love, your body responds. We know that. So these are 50 examples of love stories I recently collected. And it shows that even with this parametric system that has the same rules, we have totally different shapes. So I just want to finish saying that let's use the best of the technology and combining it with love because we fucked up the planet. We are talking a lot about this in the past, uh, in, in, in this past hours and the past day. And I truly believe that the only possible way of saving and rescuing us is adding this technology and love. So thank you so much. One question. One question.